So in this lab, our goal is to isolate um, the protein casein from um, milk. So we're using, of course, dried milk, um, and I've pre-weighed the amount of um, dried milk, so we'll need approximately four grams. So you can record this value down, and um, this mass, of course, is 4.008 grams of our dried milk. I'm going to take it over um, to our hot plate. I'm going to initially add 40 ml of water and then dissolve, um, place it on the hot plate and try to dissolve it at approximately 40 degrees Celsius. Maintaining the temperature is going to be extremely important in this experiment to avoid um, denaturing, of course, our protein. Yep, so I'm going to now go ahead and add the 40 ml of distilled water to our dry milk. We're going to transfer our beaker to the hot plate and then we're going to monitor the temperature using, of course, our thermometer. Um, and again, as I said to you earlier, we want to make sure that this temperature does not go above maybe, say, 45 degrees Celsius. Um, while it's heating, we also want to make sure that we continue stirring um, on and off and to make sure that this dry milk dissolves. So now that our thermometer has reached um, 40, between 40 and 45 degrees, I'm going to remove from the hot um, plate, and I'm going to keep on now adding, I'm going to go ahead and add acetic acid. The purpose of that acetic acid, of course, is to precipitate out um, casein. And so as that solid casein is formed, I'm going to try and, and, and remove it, right? Not really remove it physically, but move it all to the side um, in a preferred beaker. So I'm now going to remove our thermometer and I'm going to start adding the acetic acid. So I'm going to start adding um, the acetic acid dropwise, no more than about five drops or so each time. I'm going to stir and allow the solid to form. Don't forget, as I said to you earlier, the solid that is forming is actually um, casein. Now we don't want to add too much um, acetic acid, so as soon as no additional salt is forming, I'm going to um, actually stop adding um, that acetic acid. So as soon as we're not forming any additional casein, um, we'll stop adding the acetic acid. So after adding the acetic acid, um, Gradually, no more than five drops at a time. You'll notice here, right, that our solid casein, um, uh, or the casein has precipitated. And so in the next step, I'm gonna transfer this um, to our cheesecloth. So what I have here um, in the setup is a beaker, equipped, of course, with the cheesecloth, because honestly, all we, we need moving forward is just, of course, the casein. So the, the challenge now is to make sure that I just collect um, this white precipitate. And so slowly, I'm gonna go ahead and add or transfer um, the solid to the um, cheesecloth. Sometimes you might just wanna double up if your particles are just way too small. So you, you'll notice here that the, um, the casein is on the filter paper. Oh, on the cheesecloth. I'm so used to filter paper. Forgive me. And the solution, right, has passed through that um, cheesecloth. In the next step, I'm going to allow this to dry. So I'm going to transfer this solid to a pre-weighed, so I'm going to make sure that I pre-weighed watch glass, allow the casein to dry, and so we can determine the exact mass of casein that was um, recovered or extracted from, of course, um, 
or dry milk. And also from there, you can also calculate your percent recovery. After I'm um, trying my best, of course, to squeeze all of the um, liquid out of the, um, our sample, I also um, use, of course, a paper towel as well. And now I'm transferring um, the, the casing to a watch glass. And the goal here um, is that it sit for approximately 15 minutes um, and hopefully it will be dry. It will probably take a little longer, so you need to recognize the fact that at the end, this mass will might most likely be slightly higher than it should be due to the fact that your sample is not completely dry. The goal in this section is to make sure that we know the exact mass, of course, of casein that was extracted um, from that dry milk. So I have zeroed, of course, or teared, of course, the balance um, with our watch glass. Um, and now I'm going to be adding the casein, which is almost dry. To see if um, we can now record the exact mass of casein that was isolated or what we often say in chemistry extracted. And so, um, based on this, we have isolated 1.119 grams of casein. And so, again, this is 1.119 grams of casein. And so, we're going to move on, of course, to testing our sample. Right? We're going to be doing the biuric test. We'll also complete, of course, the heavy metal test. As well and finally of course um, the coagulation test. So in this part of the experiment we're going to be preparing the solution um, or, or the solution of casein that we're going to be using later of course for our tests. So we're going to be completing actually three tests. The biuric test and we'll also do the coagulation test and the test for heavy metals. But before we can get to the point where we're doing that test we'll first need to prepare of course that casein solution. And so um, right now I've already pre-weighed exactly 0.274 grams or 273 grams of, so this is 0.273 grams of um, casein. This is a casein that was um, extracted earlier, right, from our um, dry milk. I'm going to transfer, of course, the solid. to our beaker. And the goal here is to first, right, in order for us to do any testing on the casein, we'll first need, of course, to make sure it's in solution. So I'm going to dissolve our casein in 25 milliliters of water. And to aid to make sure that this solid completely dissolves, I'm also going to be adding um, five drops of sodium hydroxide. Now this is a 10% solution of sodium hydroxide. I'm a mass of volume percent. And so I'm, I'm going to carefully measure out five drops, just five drops. One, two, three, four. Look at a second here, bubbles. Five. Now, if, please note, if the casein does not dissolve after the addition of the five um, drops of sodium hydroxide, I will need to continue. Try to add sodium hydroxide to make sure and that I get all of the casein in solution. So in this part of the experiment, we're going to be doing the biuric test. Um, and honestly, this is just a test for protein. Um, casein is a protein. And so if casein is present, then you might say, well, how is it that casein is present? Well, do not forget that we, we did take, of course, what? Um, or 0 0.2, approximately 0.2 grams of casein. We dissolved it, of course, in water, 25 minutes of water. We added that sodium hydroxide to make that solution. So now we're just testing that solution. Um, and so in the biuric test, I've taken one ml, of course, of um, that solution that contains casein. I've added also the sodium hydroxide, 10 drops of sodium hydroxide. And so in that final step, we're going to be adding three drops of um, a 2.5% solution of copper to sulfate. Now, please keep in mind that if, of course, um, casein is present, you will expect to see, of course, a valid 
um, color. And what I need for you to record on your data sheet is not only the color, but also the intensity of that color. So how intense is that color? So that's one drops, two, and three. And recall I said to you that if a, um, a protein is present, you will notice, of course, right, that violet color. And so just for comparison, I will. Um, I just want to point out to you that um, that that two point five percent solution of copper two sulfate, that's a blue solution, and for certain, right? You you'll know that color change, right? Um, of that casein in the presence, of course, of copper two sulfate. Um, in our second test, um, we're going to be testing, of course, um, the precipitation for heavy metals, and again, um, we have, of course, our casein solution. And to this, I'm going to add, and now please note, that led to nitrate is a clear colorless solution. And so to this, we're adding approximately, and it's no more, but approximately, of course, um, five drops um, initially. But I'm, the goal is not to exceed 12 drops. And so you should know the formation, right? At least you should record that data. What did you observe? I won't tell you. Um, so this part of the experiment, we're gonna be um, doing the test for heat coagulation. And so just before, here we have just our solution um, of casein. Um, and so I'm gonna immerse that in a hot water bath for approximately three minutes. And then we'll come back to see exactly the results. So this is gonna be placed in a hot water bath for three minutes. So after three minutes of heating, um, I need for you to um, record exactly what you have observed. 